sentencing, which has now been scheduled for June 25th. A diverse jury deliberated for about 10 hours after three weeks of often emotional testimony. The jurors' names were withheld during the whole process. 31-year-old Brandon Mitchell was known only as juror number 52, and he joins us now. Brandon, we're really glad to see you because all of us wanted to know what happened. So I'd like you, if you could, please take us inside the room. I think we were surprised that you're 12 strangers, you didn't know each other, you go in the room, what's the process and how were you able to reach a verdict so quickly? And good morning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Good morning to you. <laughs> um, first, I want to send my condolences to the Floyd family. Yes. Um, but, but when we walked into the deliberation room, um, the first thing we did is we voted on whether or not we wanted to have our mask on. So we made that kind of an icebreaker just to get going. Mm -hmm. um, we voted to not have our mask on, we took our mask off. Then we voted for um, a four person. Um, and from there, um, we went straight into the manslaughter charges and took a preliminary vote before doing a final vote mm -hmm. um, on those charges and went forward from there. Now, what was a preliminary vote? Um, the preliminary vote was, 11 of us were already, um, we were already on board for guilty for the manslaughter and one person was still unsure. Um, and we just went over it as a team, as a group. Um, each person kind of went down the line on why they thought it was guilty. Um, we did another vote maybe 40 minutes later after we went through everybody and everybody was on the same page for the manslaughter. It, it happened really quickly. And did you do that with each of the charges? Is that what you did, took a vote on each of the charges? Yep, so each each charge, we did a preliminary vote mm -hmm. um, to see where we were at, um, if there was anybody that was not on board yet or was unsure, then we would, you know, go around the room, everybody kind of speak on what they th what they think is, is necessary to speak on. Uh, we went over maybe a little bit of the evidence, um, and then we would come back with the final vote whenever we thought it was a suitable time. What was the one person unsure about, Brandon? Um, I think it was like the ter just the terminology. So within the instructions, you know, some of the terminology can be a little tricky because um, it's, it's legal jargon. And so sometimes some of the words can be uh, interpreted differently amongst people. So it was just, you know, they wanted to do their due diligence and just make sure that they were coming out with the right verdict that they believed in. Um, so they were just hung up on a few words and we kind of went through went through the the definitions that were given to us and kind of broke it down from different perspectives um, to get everybody on the same page. Was there any particular witness that moved you and moved the jury that you said, okay, we were deeply affected by fill in the blank? Yeah, so I think as a whole, as a whole jury, I think Dr. Tobin was the biggest, most, the most influential witness um, out of everybody. Uh, for me personally, Donna Williams was another person. Um, so Donna Williams and Dr. Tobin for fighter, me, for yeah. sure. Yeah, that was a big yeah, smart yeah, fighter. Yeah, 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 the fighter. Yeah, so him early on, I thought he set the tone for, for the rest of the trial. And then when Dr. Tobin came, um, with him speaking so scientifically, but also making it understandable for everyone, along with the, the exhibits that he came with, um, I thought he just broke it down in a manner that was easy for, for all the jurors to understand, and I didn't think there was any way to for the defense to to come back after that. I was like, I mean, to me, the case was it was it was done at that point almost. Did, well, did you feel pressure because you knew the world was watching that you know we have to reach a guilty verdict here? Not at all. And I don't no? think I don't think any of us felt like that. Um, I I for sure did not. Mm -hmm. I for sure did not feel like that. Um, the pressure more so came from just being in the room and being under stress, mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't pressure to come to a guilty verdict. Um, the, you know, what whatever, were you stressed about? What showed, were you all stressed about? We were just stressed about just the simple fact of, I mean, every day we had to come in and watch a black man die. Mm -hmm. That alone is stressful. Yes. Coming in each and every day um, and having to watch somebody die is, is, is stressful enough by itself. So anything outside of that was, was secondary just because as, as a human, it's natural to feel some kind of way as you're watching somebody in agony. Yeah, I, I can't imagine, Brandon, what it was like to be able to, to watch that tape day after day after day the way you all did. Yeah, it definitely had its, uh, it, impact, it, it had its impact on me. I mean, there was a few days where, where, uh, where I was like, I don't know, 
I don't know how I'm going to make it in this next day, especially yeah. me as a, as a black man and a larger black man. I'm about 6'4", 250 pounds, and some of the testimonies just um, like like saying how size could be um, considered like you know is it a risk or a threat? And it's a threat. Whereas me, I'm a I'm a gentle giant. Yeah, but stuff I, like that that affects me in a in a in a way that is is weird. I mean, I don't know if it affects anybody else the same way. No, I I understand. I understand what you're saying. How did you all feel about Derek Chauvin? The fact that he did not take the stand would that have made a difference? Do you think? We'll never know. But do you think it would have made a difference? Um, it possibly it possibly could have. Um, we did we did talk about you know the fact that he didn't. Um, somebody had brought it up like they wished they, that he would have, they would have liked to have heard from him. Mm -hmm. um, but it, since it wasn't part of the case, it just is what it is. Uh, it, but yeah, if, I mean, anything brought in or not brought in, it, it could have possibly affected it either way, either way. I can't say it would have changed the outcome, but it's a possibility for sure. And do you worry about your safety now? This was such a controversial case. We now know your name. We now know what you look like. We now know that you said you're a large man. Do you worry about your safety? No, not at all. <laughs> not at all. I'm, I'm personally, I'm a person that kind of thrives in the positives. Um, so I'm not too much concerned about that, nor do I dwell on, uh, the what on negativity like that.